Hey guys, Elliot here. I want to show you a completely and utterly ridiculous game of Prismata that I just played. I really have no words to describe how crazy this game was. Um, I was playing my friend Mike, and it was just a regular 30 second time limit, base set plus 8 random unit game of Prismata. Um, and it started off pretty simple. Uh, I opened Drone Drone, Mike replied Drone Drone, I went Drone Drone again, and then Mike did Drone Drone Engineer. And usually Drone Drone Engineer is sort of a signal that you're going for an economic build and you want to pump more drones. But in this case, there's this unit called Centrifuge present. And Centrifuge requires 12 gold plus 3 energy to build. So by getting an extra engineer, Mike is essentially signaling to me that he intends to get a Centrifuge. And what this thing does is it takes 3 turns to construct and then spits out a ton of resources. 20 gold, 2 green, 2 blue, and 2 red. So essentially, you put away a bunch of gold for a while, and then three turns later, you get this massive surge of resources that you can use to buy pretty much whatever you want. Centrifuge is a really interesting economic card, but there's lots of ways to punish it because Mike's going to be 12 gold behind for three turns. So I thought about different ways the centrifuge build and I decided to go conduit animus because this allows me to buy this unit called a scorchilla which uh, does three damage right away the turn after I buy it so that would guarantee me to be able to kill some of Mike's engineers and in fact he did go for the centrifuge and what I could have done this turn is just to buy a scorchilla plus a rhino which I have actually exactly the correct resources for because the Scorchilla costs 7 and the Rhino costs 5 and I have 2 red and a green. And this would actually force Mike to allow me to breach because he doesn't have any tech up. He doesn't have a Conduit, Blast Forge, or Animus up. So he literally can't buy any prompt defenders at all. So if I was to get the Scorchilla plus a Rhino, I'd be able to guarantee myself a Breach, kill the three Engineers plus a Drone. Um, and that would put me in not a horrible position. But uh, the problem is the Scorchilla only attacks every three turns. It takes a three-turn delay after it attacks. The following two turns it can't attack again. Uh, and by the time the Scorchilla got around to attacking for the second time, Mike's Centrifuge would already have finished being constructed. Uh, so it wouldn't really have a huge punch the second time around, and I thought I could do a bit better uh, in exploiting Mike's sort of lack of defense while his centrifuge is still under construction by going for a Thernax instead. And what I realized here is that if I just get another conduit and save my green that the current conduit produced, the next turn I would have three green the one produced this turn by my single conduit, and the two produced next turn by my other conduits if I bought another one. So that's what I did. And I also had enough left over to buy two Tarsiers. So I went Tarsier, Tarsier, Conduit. And the Tarsiers are timed nicely because they'll complete their construction the same time my Thernax does if I choose to get it next turn. So uh, I'm pretty sure Mike predicted what I was going to do. So he thought about Blast Forge Conduit, but he actually went Blast Forge Animus. And the reason is there's this unit called Husk in the set, uh, which is two and a red for a one health prompt wall. And essentially what it does is it's, it's the same stats as an engineer, except it's prompt, so it can defend the turn you buy it. And Husks are really good defense uh, when you're desperate. And so I think getting an Animus here is pretty reasonable. Um, so I did go for the Thernax, uh, and I had some red left over, so I, I made a Rhino also. And notice that because the Thernax forces me to sack seven drones to buy it, I only have three drones left, so it's kind of crazy. Um, so I have this massive attack. I'm threatening 10 damage to Mike. His Centrifuge isn't ready yet, and he has to somehow pull together a defense. And what he did is uh, he thought about getting another Blast Forge, but I think he just couldn't afford it uh, with his defensive needs. And he actually holds back three drones just so that his wall stays alive. This is generally a good idea when you need to defend, uh, to defend for one more than your opponent's attacking for, just so you, that the wall at the back of your defensive stack can stay alive. Um, and so I did attack with everything. Uh, and I didn't buy anything because I actually just want to save up my resources to get a Scorchilla or something else that can put even more pressure on Mike. So here I'm attacking for 10, he's defending for 11, so he actually loses just everything except his wall. 
uh, which absorbs the two remaining damage. And so now his wall's still there, and his centrifuge is finally done. So if you look at Mike's resource pool, he's got this massive pile of resources, 28 gold, 2 green, 3 blue, 4 red, and he can basically buy whatever he wants. Um, unfortunately, I'm still threatening 10 damage, so Mike needs to somehow figure out his defense and then figure out how to spend the rest of his resources to sort of counterattack me or put me under a bit of pressure myself. Um, and he chose to spam a bunch of walls and actually just go for Scorchillus. Uh, so he's now actually threatening 6 damage towards me immediately after his turn. Uh, and he has enough defense. Uh, so I need to deal with 6 damage. And essentially uh, what I did was um, I sacked one of my uh, drones to create a force field and then built a bunch of husks. So I'm not holding back my rhino to defend. I did want to apply as much damage as possible. Uh, but I built a bunch of defense. And so Mike had to defend, and he attacked with his Scorchillas, and my Thurnax still has one more volley of attack left, so Mike's still got to defend that. And so uh, he does that by building a bunch of husks and holding back drones, which is essentially his only way to defend that well. Um, I mean, he could have bought another wall instead of the husks. Uh, that could have been marginally better. Um, but he actually doesn't have enough, uh, if he did that, he wouldn't be able to keep, uh, the wall at the back of his stack alive. So instead he's going to give up a bunch more drones. Um, and so I'm able to kill everything except his wall by attacking and I didn't buy anything. Uh, but we're now in this sort of weird, uncomfortable situation where both of us have two drones. I have two Tarsiers. But Mike's wall essentially stops them dead in their tracks because uh, every turn he can just absorb the two damage they do and take no permanent injury to his wall. Uh, meanwhile, Mike has these two Scorchillas, and they're going to attack me in a couple of turns, but I can defend them at least for a little while using my Thurnax and my Rhino as blockers because uh, the Thurnax with four health and the Rhino with two health can absorb the six damage from the Scorchillas, no problem. Uh, so it's sort of a, a waiting game where we both have to just wait till we have some more resources and rebuild a little bit in order to press forward. Um, so Mike just uh, earns his $2 from his drones and puts them in the bank. Um, I actually got a victory bond. Uh, a victory bond, if you don't know, is a unit that lets you put five gold in the bank this turn and collect six gold next turn. So it's essentially a miniature version of the centrifuge, except it doesn't give you all these other resources, and it's only one turn instead of three. And the reason is I essentially wanted to save up for a Scorchilla, and my intention, I would have just kept six gold in the bank, but given that I can buy a victory bond instead, I might as well so that I have an extra gold next turn. Um, so Mike again just saves his resources, and now I have some money to spend because my victory bond went off. Um, so I actually did get my own Scorchilla to try and put a bit more pressure on Mike. And what Mike did here was actually pretty clever. He actually only attacked with one of his Scorchillas. And because of my defensive configuration, I actually can't exploit that at all by defending in any efficient way with the Rhino at the back of the stack. Instead, I would be forced to either lose the Rhino and the Husk, or have the Tia Thurnax be at the back of the stack. And the Tia Thurnax, meaning uh, it takes permanent damage, so having it at the back of the stack isn't any advantage in terms of being able to absorb damage. So Mike was able to take advantage of me by attacking with one Scorchilla, and he's actually leaving the other one back on defense so that he can lose the wall and then absorb the other two uh, damage with his Scorchilla. Uh, and he gets his own victory bond. So now I have to deal with Mike's attack. Um, and I, I did decide to attack anyway just because I want to clear out his wall, even though because he bought the victory bond, he could just rebuild the wall. Um, so Mike did rebuild the wall and then saved four gold in the bank, and he attacked me for three. So I've now lost my Thurnax, I've lost my Husk, I've still got the Rhino defending. But, uh, you know, we're sort of back in the same situation. I can't get through Mike's wall with my two Tarsiers. Uh, so I actually took the opportunity uh, to buy a third Tarsier, and this changes the game quite a bit.
because now uh, if that Tarsier is allowed to finish its construction and Mike doesn't do anything about it, then I will have enough forces to sort of actually put pressure on Mike and force him to do something to avoid losing his wall and getting breached. Um, meanwhile, Mike's got these two Scorchillas, which are ready to uh, deal lots of damage to me, and I need a way of dealing with them. And one of the big asymmetries in this position is that I have these conduits. So I have the availability of force fields. I can sack my drones to get two defense with each of them. And Mike doesn't have that option. So uh, that does prove to be important later in the game. Um, and Mike actually got a Tarsier of his own to put me under pressure. I'm not entirely sure that's correct. It might have just been better for Mike to sit back and defend. Or maybe buy something with a bit more toughness. Um, but in any case, here I found myself in an interesting defensive situation where uh, Mike's threatening three, and I essentially could have bought a force field, but I decided to go with a husk instead just to keep my drones for one more turn. And uh, here if Mike attacks me with the Scorchilla, he's going to kill my husk and my rhino. But I don't really care, because my two drones, if they need to, can make force fields and defend. So I'm not in a horrible position. Um... So, what happened next? Um, so here my Scorchilla finally gets its opportunity to attack. But if I attacked with it on this turn, then uh, Mike would be able to breach me. And that would be the end. So I actually leave my Scorchilla back on defense uh, in order to absorb Mike's attack. Opportunity to attack with everything. Um, and he basically has to, because he's not going to make much progress against my three Tarsiers. Uh, they're going to kill a wall. And he can just build a husk every turn and sort of, uh, you know, absorb husk in front of wall every time I attack for three. But he's going to eventually run out of husks. And he's also going to lose because um, here I have a draw in there. Make uh, one gold every turn. And if he's spending his two gold, husks, then he's not making any progress. So he needs to do something a bit different. Um, and so he attacks me with one of his Scorchillas, which again forces me into uh, a defensive spot. But here I can actually absorb one damage with my Rhino, so it's not too bad. Um, and the thing I wanted to know was whether or not I actually had a way of attacking with my Scorchilla. So I was messing around with different defensive options, and I, I discovered that maybe it might actually be better for me to block with the Scorchilla uh, just to keep the husk alive. Um, so there are sort of uh, a couple of different options. One is defending husk force field rhino against Mike's four damage, and... Uh, and the other option which I took was to defend just force field in, in front of Scorchilla. So the husk lives, but the Scorchilla takes two damage, whereas the rhino would have taken zero. But I want to attack with the Scorchilla, so I don't actually care how much damage it has on it right now. And uh, I think this turned out to be a winning play, because here I can just sack my last drone to get a force field, attack with the Scorchilla into Mike's army, and now he has to lose his wall, and he basically can't do anything against my Tarsiers because he doesn't have enough resources to protect his guys. Um, like, he can get a couple of husks, but I'm still going to breach him for one damage, and his Scorchillas are never going to get to attack again because I'm just going to kill a Scorchilla every turn. Um, and so Mike resigned in this position because he has absolutely no way to defend against me getting through to all of his guys. Um, but that was like a really long drawn out game given the sort of abrupt opening that caused us both to sacrifice all of our drones by about turn seven um you know i guess this is uh this is turn eight and mike's mike and i are both down to two drones and even after we're down to two drones the game went on another seven turns as we went through this sort of weird uh scorchilla cycle um, and economic rebuilding where we sort of changed our tactics up and spent our resources again. And uh, games of Prismata like this are really interesting because of the trajectory they take. Like, it often looks like it's going to be a big economic game, and then the reply to that type of opening could just be a really degenerate rush, like spamming a Thurnax out and just dropping it on the table. Um, and the game can take a completely different direction. Like, if Mike had chosen to get something different than these two Scorchillas, the game could have been totally different. Like, he could have got way more defensive units, 
uh, and instead of trying to counterattack me, he just tried to hold together his uh, economy and sort of uh, just keep more drones alive than me and try and win a long game with an economic victory. But instead, he went for this counterattack, which I think is a really strong play. Uh, and maybe there were some mistakes made by both of us, but it's really hard to tell in these types of situations what to do because there's just so many possibilities available. And sometimes you have 30 seconds on the clock and you just have to do something. Um, so I don't know. If you guys can think of any turns where maybe one of us could do something different to change the outcome of the game, uh, definitely let me know. Uh, but I will be studying this game quite a bit because I think it's super interesting. And I hope that when you guys all play Prismata, you get to find games like this too. Uh, because sometimes it just blows your mind. And I'm completely in awe of what happened in this game. Anyways, take care. I'll see you guys next time.